Okay, I recently showed you a video of my overcrowded workshop, and now we're taking overcrowded workshop to a whole nother level. As you can see here, and the reason this is so overcrowded is because we have a mouse problem, or I hope we're fixing to solve our mouse problem. We've caught seven so far, and my mother's convinced that it's all due to all, to all of the electronic stuff that I had stored in the basement. So to appease her, I moved it all to my shop, because I'm certainly not throwing any of it away. I don't think that's the, what the problem is, but, you know. But yeah, got a lot of stuff here. A lot of these radios are part sets. A lot of them are future projects, just stuff I picked up here and there. There's a stack of radios right here. And a stack of turntables and an old Hitachi VCR from the early 80s. That's a Technics 1200 and a couple of Pioneer turntables that the feet are rotting on. I need to devise, a, devise some new feet for them. And some more old radios, a Silvertone AM set that somebody painted white. And a Airline, Ward's Airline AM, FM, and a late 60's Motorola clock radio. Here's a GE World Monitor multiband radio from the early 70's and see what else we've got back here. You can't see it, but that's a 49 Admiral Bakelite radio phono combo and a little 7 inch Admiral TV. And there's the old gray talking book player and, a, and there's the Newcomb transcription player there. Here's a GE World Monitor Radio, I think it's a model P990 from probably the mid-1960s. There's a couple of Heathkit audio oscillators. And some more stuff up there, another Admiral Bakelite Radio Phono Combo. Here's an electric heater that I have torn apart. And there's the part of the heater. Here's some radios here, so they're in pretty bad shape. A airline cathedral radio from the early 30s. It's been hacked on pretty bad. Here's a Sears, uh, old Sears multiband radio from the late 60s. That I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this to a friend of mine, which you know who you are if you're watching this. An old Hunter fan and. Old Apex metal can radio from the late 20s. I guess they were trying to copy out Water Kent there. And here's the speaker that goes with it. And a Philco Cathedral that's pretty rough. And a Philco Tombstone that's pretty rough. And a Zenith portable radio that's pretty beat up. Here's some more old radios. That's a Setchell Carlson, which was originally a, a farm radio, a battery-operated farm radio, but it's been hacked up real bad. And there's a Sears Silvertone farm radio and a Slant Front Philco from around 39. That one I've recapped, and it works good, but the cabinet needs some help. And there's a big uh, Montgomery Ward Airline farm radio from the late 30s. There's some televisions back there. There's a big Sylvania 21 inch round tube color set and a little GE black and white sitting on top of it. And a Holocrafters communications receiver back over there as well as other junk. Here's my workbench. It's a disaster area that I need to clean off. And there's some more junk over there, radios and fans and what have you. Record players up there. Here's a, what's this thing? Here's a Hitachi AM FM radio in the early 70s, I'd say. Here's 
And you can see way back up in there all the other goodies. It's stashed back up in there. I probably need to quit buying stuff and fix some of what I've got here or have a cleaning out sale. Here's an old GE radio from the early 60s. Let's see if I can get it out. Kind of reminds you of a, a portable room air conditioner, the way it's designed. General Electric Musophonic. Okay, here's the Apex metal can tube radio that we just looked at a minute ago. I thought we'd look at this in more detail. I got this years ago from from somebody else, and I believe they got it from somebody who repaired old radios. And as you can see, all the tubes are missing. And this container here that contains something has either leaked something out of it or somebody melted something out of it. I don't know whether that's a capacitor or a, or a filter choke, but it worries me. Given the size of it, it's probably a capacitor. And this schematic diagram was laying inside the radio when I got it. My fear is that something major was found to be wrong with this radio, and somebody yanked the tubes out of it and, and set it aside to die. But yeah, this uses five number 26 tubes, a number 27 tube, two 71As, and a type 80 rectifier tube, which I probably should have those tubes in something. Like I said, this is an Apex brand, probably from the late 1920s. Not to be confused with the current Apex brand that's slapped on low-end digital Chinese garbage. This one was actually made by U.S. Radio and Television Corporation. And here's the speaker that goes with it that I believe was made by Utah. Let's see if there's a label on here anywhere. Well, I don't see one, but somewhere in my mind I'm thinking that speaker was made by Utah. But I'm good at bringing radios back to life that have had catastrophic failures, so let's see what I can do with this. And here's that little Motorola clock radio from around 68. It's a solid state job. I get a little email that says, oh, for Obamacare. <laughs> Turns out by an inner. The cap gains rate is add three. It works pretty good. To Nothing to write home about. But both of these are. And we'll turn it around. We'll look the in the back. The Republicans are not proposing tax cuts, and neither is President Obama. Still has an old style interlock, which you'd see on a tube set. And there's the inside showing the chassis, just a little single printed circuit board chassis, no power transformer that's strictly driven by the AC power line and uses a high voltage audio output stage. And here's a silver tone candy cane radio. The reason it's upside down is because the plastic chassis mounts are broken and the chassis won't stay in it, so I'm going to have to devise a way to fix that. Okay, so you've pretty much seen my overcrowded junkie workshop and yes some people refer to me as a hoarder but I don't consider myself a true hoarder because number one I do get rid of stuff from time to time and if I was a true hoarder you'd see all the McDonald's hamburger sacks full of garbage in here too and as you can see there's none of that it's all strictly electronic junk so uh, there you go thanks for watching and more to come later